Well, hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Jessica Radloff. I am the West Coast editor at Glamour, and I am so beyond thrilled to be joined today by the entire cast of GLOW. This has been such an emotional <laughs> Hello, everybody. Week. Good morning, good I'm afternoon, so wherever you, you are. And My name is Jessica Radloff. This is a flashback here tonight um, or today. I, I can't wait to talk to everybody. Um, this, this panel, this Q&A was originally done uh, to support new voters, to get people to register to vote. And not only did you guys meet that goal, but you surpassed it. And the entire cast promised, yay, everybody clap Woo! for that. Woo! Woo! That is our goal today. That is what we wanted. If you still haven't registered to vote and you can still register to vote in your state, please do so. Please go about everything. Um, this cast is truly incredible and I am so proud and excited to have them. They have meant so much to me personally, to the entire Glamour family from the magazine, to our website, to our events. They truly are a family. So as everybody is coming into the Zoom, I'm gonna introduce everybody because we have 17 family members on here. So get ready to give them a huge round of applause. So please welcome from the Emmy SAG Critics' Choice Award nominated show GLOW. First up, she plays Ruth. Please welcome Allison Bree. <laughs> Next up, she is Debbie. Betty Gilpin, yes. followed by V. Sam Sylvia. Please welcome Mark Marin. <laughs> all right, all right. We have Cherry in the house, Sidel Noel. Hey. I love it. <laughs> Carmen herself from Alaska. We got Brittany Young. Yeah. 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 Next up, we got Sam's daughter, Justine, a new filmmaker and making. Please welcome Britt Barron. Hey, baby Britt. <laughs> Next up, this Zoom, this panel would not be possible without the amazing Kate Nash. She plays Rhonda. Yay! 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 Next up, we've got Sheila. So please welcome Gail Rankin. Her cat. We're waiting for the cat to make an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, she plays Tame. Please welcome Kia Stevens. Woohoo! Ultimate background. I love it, Kia. <laughs> That's the background we see. Um, next up, she plays Melrose. Please welcome Jackie Tone. Jackie Tone. We got Rhonda's husband here now. He plays Bash. Please welcome Chris Lowell. All right. <laughs> oh. There are problems in that marriage. We're going to have to get to that later. Um, <laughs> next up, she plays Stacy. Please welcome Kimmy Gatewood. Kimmy. Yeah. Next up, she plays Dawn. Please welcome Rebecca Johnson. Yay. 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 She's got a new movie out, but she plays Arthi on the show. Please welcome Sunitha Mani. Oh. Hey. Hi. Hi, Hi, everyone. Aww. <laughs> Reggie, please welcome Mariana Palka. Hi, okay. Ridge. So much. Uh, second to last, she plays Jenny. We have Ellen Wong, known as the Wongster on Instagram. <laughs> and then finally, she is Yolanda. Please welcome Shakira Barrera. Woo! 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 And that's all the time we have. Thank you very much. <laughs> <That's coming. laughs> exactly. Oh, I am so happy to see all of your faces. And really, I mean, talk about a commitment level to voting that all of you are here today. It means so much. Um, Betty, I'm going to let you start things off. I know you want to say a little something after what has been a really roller coaster week. So take it away. Yeah. So, well, first of all, uh, hi, everybody. I just want to first say thank you so much to uh, everybody who used the headcount mm -hmm. link to um, register to vote or make a voting plan. Uh, our show is, um, among many other things, about people who sometimes feel powerless, do powerful things. And right now, I think the most powerful thing you can do is uh, vote. And if we save the world in this election, maybe we can go back to a time where 
irrelevant theater majors in pajamas aren't preaching to you about what to do with your time. And I can just go back to being a jester with boobs. But until then, <laughs> let's save the world. Yeah. Um, I also want to say, you know, we have score. We scheduled oh. this Zoom when we thought we'd still have a season four. So it feels like we invited you to our wedding and then the groom had sex with a cross-eyed cocktail waitress. And now we're just all drunk at the venue together. And we're like, enjoy the quiches because it's over. Um, but if this wedding is now a funeral, let's make it one of those fun, great ones. And one where I shut up and let everybody I love talk. <laughs> Welcome. Oh. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Daddy. Cross eye later. Bravo. <laughs> Listen, I've watched enough soap operas in my life to know nothing is ever really dead. So I am keeping the hope alive that we can make something happen because you guys are too brilliant. This show is too good not to have closure in some way for these amazing characters and cast. I just want to put that out there right now uh, mm -hmm. because you mean so much to all of us. In fact, a lot of the questions that came in, so many of them were, I don't have a question. I just want them to know how much this show has meant to me. Um, and we need your voices and these characters in our lives more than ever. So with that said, I have so many questions to get to. <laughs> so many people that did write in that had great questions. I think this is a fantastic one to start with. It's from at Nuts and Pickles. Maybe sure. they're, who knows? Um, <laughs> they would like to know what surprised you all the most about the show compared to your first expectations or assumptions about it. Since Mark uh, came on uh, first of the guys, I think, I'm gonna have Mark start this off. What, what, was, what surprised you the most about the show compared to your first expectations about it? Well, I think uh, the, the most surprising thing for me was, you know, how quickly everybody sort of, you know, grouped into kind of this family environment and trusted everybody and, and, and everyone trusted each other. And it just seemed that at first I thought it would, is there any way this can't be like a campy shit show? And it turned out like it, it, it not only wasn't that, it was like the opposite of that. Everything was handled sort of like appropriately and, you know, time-wise it was all appropriate. So the characters were really able to sort of rise above what could have been this costume party and create real stories with, you know, real depth and real feelings. And, and I found that, um, I don't know, in the midst of all this, you know, all that makeup and glitter and everything were these really kind of powerful things happening between people. And it was, a, I, I was surprised every day being there and I was always happy to go to work. That Ali, how about you? I mean, I, I probably am just gonna echo what Mark said. I feel like uh, on either side, I mean, there was so much in the pilot itself that that sort of reflected where the show could and would go because the pilot sort of had it all already in terms of like drama, comedy, struggle, um, ending in this big wrestling match. But of course it was just only following this one character. So I think seeing it branch out into the full group and seeing like the the depths to which we really could go with with certain really serious themes and then on the flip side, how silly it could get um, and still be good. Uh, you know, I think about season two when we shot the episode within an episode and it's it just something I had not, oh yeah. And then I guess we'll watch the show they've been making. And suddenly I'm in a bowl cut wig with a mole <laughs> on a goat with a crutch <laughs> and like, but it's still great TV, <laughs> stuff like that. I think was also, I, I would say that I, I was so surprised I mean, not surprised, delighted on a daily basis by every woman in this Zoom room by just, you know, in the first episode, we, we meet everyone so briefly. And then to see um, just how many different secret talents all these women had and how the show was able to make use of them, even in just small ways, sometimes I think was really cool. Love that. This question comes from at Gina Marie underscore underscore zero five. What did you think when you read the script for the first time? Betty, you had such a epic pilot episode. I rewatched it last night. So what did you think when you first read that script? Uh, when I first read the script, I thought 
Oh no, because, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd been working as a, as an actor and, and making a living, which is hard to do, but I, I hadn't really, uh, I don't know. I, I think that, um, there are rare scripts that come along that, uh, you kind of well, see your exact dream mirrored on the page. And when you don't get those parts, which you usually uh, don't, it's really, really painful. Um, and I thought, oh God, I don't know if I can go through this heartbreak of not getting this because this is exactly the dream that I want to do. Um, and, you know, I auditioned uh, six times and every time I left being like, you have to say fully goodbye. Like you have to let it go. And the last time I was like, if this is the only time you're going to be her, why don't you just fully do this? Like, why don't you just across from this nice, <laughs> this nice woman, Alison Brie, who seems very lovely. Why don't you just, why don't you just fully go there with her? If this is the last time that you'll get to be this character in this audition room in Toronto. Um, and uh, luckily that wasn't the last time. Luckily that was the first of many times I got to do that with Allie. Um, so honestly, I, uh, <laughs> reading the script, it felt like looking down a corridor of a version of my life that uh, was a lot more magnificent than I thought it was going to be. And I, I'm very lucky that I got to walk down that corridor for three years. Guys, I'm just crying and sweating the whole time. I'm like, something else. I'm not joking. I like took my sweater out and I just keep like putting it on and then like crying. Oh God, I think I smell order. like shit and I'm just crying. I can't smell you through the Zoom, so it's okay. Going. But I can smell me, dude. Like it's on hand. Just I can actually smell you, Jackie, snip. and it's okay. Yeah. It actually the deal is window. Work. Okay, thanks, guys. I, I'll open the door. Oh my <laughs> I want to live in your smell. It makes me think of being on set in the room. <laughs> Quick sidebar that my last day on you know, set as we were preparing for the third episode of season four, my yeah. last day, it wasn't technically on set. It was in the ring with Chavo practicing, learning a new match that will never be done. Oh. <laughs> Don't, say that. Don't say that. And we did some move and I finished it and Chavo was like, uh, you know, we practiced all our moves on Chavo first. And he was like, is that, is that Dove deodorant or? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's Dove. 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 Wow, that's How dare a, you? a taste test of Dove is yeah. very impressive. Yeah, well, I can be Dove much partner. credit. He always, that's, he gets but, a secret. That's but the palate of a man who's been in a lot of armpits. <laughs> <laughs> A man's been in an armpit. Oh, been in an armpit or two. Well, now that we've mentioned Dove, maybe maybe they can, uh, I don't know, sponsor the movie of Love. <laughs> 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 Summer's Eve. Oh, we, we need a movie. Um, before I go on to the next question, though, I'm so fascinated, Betty, that you had to audition six times. That blows my mind because I feel like all you need to do is walk into a room and I'd be like, she's hired. <laughs> um, but how many of you had chemistry reads with each other? How many of you met before the ca before you were uh, cast or, or, or whatnot? What was, Kimmy, go for it. And I think we actually auditioned together. We've been comedy partners for 13 years and we were brought in, we're in a comedy group called the Apple Sisters and Jen Houston, who cast the show, uh, remembered us from back in New York and brought us in together. Um, and which has never happened. I've never auditioned with like a, like a my best friend before. Thank <laughs> you, finally. I know. <laughs> Congrats, Rebecca. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we went in there and just did bits. Our audition was very odd. We, all up. we we improvised our whole audition together, but we wrote it kind of. We wrote a bunch of sketch characters. That's what they asked us to do. We weren't just being crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they kept being like, "Got anything else?" We're like, "Yeah, sure. You want?" Sure, yeah. <laughs> we ran around. We chased each other. I did a jump split. Kimmy did a pratfall. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually remember seeing you guys when I walked. Yeah, we passed you. And you guys were on the couch, and I was like thinking, I was like, "Those are probably big dogs. They're probably going to offer them a part. They're just here no. for a meeting." I was thinking, <laughs> I was like, I was like, there's, an there's an athlete here. No, it's yeah. so fit. We are not. 
<laughs> we were mush. <laughs> we were just mu- like our bodies were just lump, like mush. We had just had kids. <laughs> We Kimmy messaged our way into some spandex. Yeah, we said something so funnier. funny There's- what we put in our heads as actors when we see other people. <laughs> it's like, I'm thinking that you guys are going to be offered the part. You guys thinking I'm like a professional athlete. Well, I was, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I- funnier than Carly and Liz asking you guys if you have anything else. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're like, how much time do you have? We could live. <laughs> Oh my God. Did anything make it into the show that you brought into the audition? Not the exact characters, but, uh, but you know, the spirit of it is very similar to what we did. Like the beat down biddies, the spirit of that, those characters, and then how we got to like improvise and kind of um, come up with bits and stuff like that, I think came from our ridiculous show that we put on in the callback. Might, (laughs) might be crushed that we don't get to play the, the, our new characters. uh, But you know what? I'll, it'll forever be right here. <laughs> Allie, who did you love in the street read with? Oh, I auditioned four times and I read twice with Betty. I they just that. needed to see me six times. They just weren't sure. Everyone else, yeah. I, just, just Betty, <laughs> I went in, I think, five times. Or Oh, I but, actually went in seven. I went in nine times and um, and also uh, I'm best friends with Kimmy. So not to like brag about it, but anyway, Becca, it's okay. I got um, uh, I, went in for, I went in for different characters. I just, they were like, is she the party girl? Is she the wolf? Is she none of these? Is she the cheerleader? It was, yeah, I just kept like coming in and trying different stuff, which was wild. I've never done that before. I got- um, You're so Melrose. I got booked off of it on my phone. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. What do you mean? What was your audition? Did you the audition was the scene when uh, I first meet uh, Ruth when she walks up, and I'm like, I see, you know, like, are you good looking? Are you not good looking? And <laughs> I and I did it with Ruth. The I, uh, he's disgruntled. Ruth. Yeah, I, I'll go back. The best, I'll go back to the, mute. The best. The best thing that happened in terms of like the character of that character was I had made some decisions about how Sam did cocaine from my <laughs> own experience from doing cocaine. I walked up to Liz and Carly, who are the dorkiest two women in the world, <laughs> real nerds. And I just look at they're They're just standing there. I'm like, I said to him, like, look, this guy, like he doesn't carry a vial. All right. There's no bindle. You know, he, he just does it out of like a folded corner of a magazine that he loaded up with a probably a pen top or a key. That's that's what this guy does. And they just looked at me for a second. And Liz goes, we're so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and Carly says, at my last job, I had to Google drugs. <laughs> oh, gosh. I would pay just to watch audition footage and then behind the scenes stuff just to see. I I really, there could be a live stream just of you guys on sets. I would pay good money for that. I'm just saying. I actually (laughs) want to see everyone's audition tapes. I hope it gets leaked. I hope Jen actually like puts together something and and puts everybody, especially Kia, because I remember she said she was out of the country and you were sending something in and you were doing all the crazy stuff, but I would love to like see it. Tokyo, in right? Kia? Yeah. yeah. I, was at, I was at a Tokyo airport. So I'm doing the lines and then you hear in the background, like Mama Nakua. And it's like, oh, okay, wait, we're going to cut it. <laughs> you were in the rolling around in a, on a Tokyo airport floor and then next to Tokyo uh, hotel room. And it was, it was madness. Yes. <laughs> Jen, Jen's watching this. Please release. The audition tapes. Just Not all of us agree. Just to every other actor's like, or don't, or definitely a hundred percent don't. <laughs> you can just Come watch my performance Chris, Chris on the show. Down. Three, yeah. three seasons. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Then, then. Turning down the role. Joaquin? Mm-hmm. Wasn't Chris like turning down the role? And they were like, no, you're bash. And Chris was like, no, I'm not auditioning again. Wait, Chris, wait, Chris, wasn't well, your audition okay, wait, all no. on mute what it or was, was, there was no audio? I got, I got, they sent me the audition and I went in and gave the single worst audition of my fucking life. It was so <laughs> far off. 
I completely misread the tone of the show and I went in trying to be like Robert Redford and all the president's men. Because <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't, a, it wasn't a scene from the show. It was just written as a rich Republican playboy who would like sleep with his own mother to get ahead or some shit like wow. that. And so I completely, I, it's so embarrassing to think story. tonally about how I went in with it. And then they, then there was damage with my audition, which I always think of as like a nice way of casting not letting anyone else see how bad you did. <laughs> and then they were like, they want to bring you back in. And I just kept being like, I'm not the guy. Trust me on this one. I'm not the guy. Um, and then Liz and Carly had seen me in a show uh, at Ars Nova in New York in 2014 called Jacuzzi. And they were like, if you can play that character, you can play this character. And um, thank God uh, I, I, I did because I, uh, this is like the best job I've ever had. And I love all these people, even Mark especially Mark. Thank you. <laughs> really though, truly, I, it was something that I, I think um, I really took the faith of, of, of Liz and Carly and, and their direction and guidance and Claire Scanlon, who directed the first episode I was in to kind of help me figure out what the hell the show was. And then, and then the fact that everybody on this uh, Zoom meeting um, was so, you know, when you come in a little bit late into the game, it's hard to kind of feel like you're immersed in, in the rest of the, the, the cast. And, and everybody was very quick to welcome me, which, which obviously meant the world. So. Well, that's because okay. you also took photos of everybody. You were the onset photographer. Oh. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I pictures. was. Well, it, it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, the, the, the costumes and the hair and makeup and, and frankly, all these actors on set, it's, it's like the, the easiest thing to photograph. Um, but yeah, it was. It was. It was a, a, a joy for me to just bring my camera every day and watch everybody do what they do. Um, yeah, I, I, I treasure them. And if you go to Chris's Instagram, uh, there's a ton of pictures that he's taken of us and of of the entire world that are so insanely beautiful. At Mr. Chris Lowell. Yeah, Instagram. Betty gets ten percent um, of all sales. Oh. Um, That's right. And so it's not going to be a lot of money, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. This question comes from just underscore Javen. During the filming process, did you girls or guys discover anything new about yourselves? Brittany, I'm going to have you answer this. What did you What did you learn about yourself through this entire <laughs> process? Um, <laughs> this is going to sound super cliche and cheesy, but something new I learned about myself was that glow was where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. um specifically the first scene I shot with Allie in the stairs where basically I had pulled my back and I'm sitting so straight and I'm telling Allie like I'm not gonna be able to walk down the stairs and she's like it's cool just take your time like the camera like she just started kind of telling me like live in this world be in this world be this character and I sat there and I was like holy cow I can't believe this is my job um, because I've been dreaming about being an actor forever and I worked in production for seven years and never thought, you know, I would have been doing this like a month before I was literally getting actors coffee. And now here I am like getting to do it. So I think for me, what I learned about myself was that I shouldn't have been scared to chase this dream in the beginning because this was clearly where I was supposed to be. Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> Brittany, if you remember, I was emailing you because you were working at Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and I was emailing you to maybe shadow an episode like yeah. two months before and then two months later we were in the same cast. <laughs> I mean, who would have known? So the answer to that question, I did previously kind of know Kimmy and Rebecca and then Shakira and I did a show years before where we literally had no lines and then <laughs> now we're part of this amazing I had cast. three lines. You have three lines? All right, she had three lines. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Lisa, what did you what did you discover about yourself throughout the entire three three and a few episodes change of playing Arthi? Oh God. So many things. The show brought so many positive things into my life. Um, I think I got a chance to like make a version of myself that I always wanted to be like you get to like when you get to go to a new school or something and you're like well now I'm gonna be 
uh, I'm going to be confident and I'm going to like accept myself (laughs) because you just decide, (laughs) but then, but then you, to actually feel that through working with these women (sighs) (laughs) and, um, (laughs) Oh, (laughs) this is so hard not to cry, but to like, um, thanks Mark. (laughs) I think just to, to, to actually accept yourself in, um, the microcosm of the world. This is the world I want to live in and the world I want to see. So it's like a, a journey of just embracing yourself and that I actually can do that (laughs) there's so much that you like tell yourself that you can't do or that's not it's not for you and like Brittany said it's like I belonged here and it was a it was a journey of uh just learning about my my actual strengths and testament to everyone here it was it was definitely through this these relationships that's it yeah (laughs) I, I can see, and I know, I mean, I've known you guys for so many years, um, what this show has meant to all of you. Allie, you got to direct um, on GLOW. So what did it mean? What did you learn about yourself and what you were capable of, um, not just as an actor and as a performer, um, but, but as a director as well? Yeah, it's sort of, uh, you know, just echoing Brittany and Suni's comments. I think that what we all learned, you know, it was these stages of like, first we learned how to wrestle. And then I think that was uh, other than Sid, who already knew she was a badass and (laughs) Kia. (laughs) It was like the rest of us being like, I'm fucking strong. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking awesome. Like, I think that was the journey of this whole show of the, of, of, there was so much random stuff thrown at us. It was like, Oh, can I do that? I can. And I, you know, I had been wanting to direct in TV for a long time because I've worked in TV for a long time um, and had never gotten the opportunity. And I had asked Liz and Carly about doing it season one. And it just was the same kind of thing where where prepping to direct, I was like, I was like, you know, did 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 a lot of work to prepare. And then of course the night before was just like. I don't know how this is going to go. You know, it's going to go one of two ways. Here we go. Mm-hmm. And really, it's, it's such a like, it's really turning into like a vain answer. I'm just like, and then I just learned I could do anything and I'm amazing. Um, <laughs> but true, but truly, I would say that like, even in the course of my six days on set directing every day, my confidence was growing and you know, the advantage you have as an actor stepping into the director's seat is that we've, I've just logged so many hours on a set and I've been able to work with so many different directors. So I, you know, I especially and, and you know, knowing these girls and this and guys and this cast so personally, I, I also had seen them work with many different directors and I knew who they liked and who they didn't like and things that worked and things that didn't work. And um so yeah, I think I mean the, the the macro lesson was more about how valuable every single person on a set is. You know, w- w- actors get to be the face of shows, and you see us all the time, and we ha- have a constant platform to speak and be seen. Um, but there's a, a, a 100 to 200 people on the set every day that are lighting us, that are holding a boom mic, that are pulling focus, and each one of those people. Um, is so good at their job on this set glow. We had an incredible crew and like, it just astonished me how, what a great team it was that every day, everyone, I mean, I'm so lucky to get to, to get to direct on the show that I, that I was acting on and, and have a relationship with this crew also. And I felt like everyone really cast and crew included was doing their part to make sure that things went smoothly. And, um, it was just astonishing every day that like every member of the crew, sometimes we'd be in a bind or a time or thing and some, you know, a grip would be like, Hey, here's an idea. And you'd be like, that is the best idea. Let's do what Seth said. We got to, <laughs> yeah. you know? And uh, so it was just kind of like, I guess I just marveled at the team aspect of it on every level and, and how fun it is to kind of just be troubleshooting things in the moment when you have really great people to work with. Also how, how 
amazing again all of these actors are because it was that was like the easiest part the you know the one part I was like well I'll be good at directing the actors because I am an actor so I can talk to actors and then I got to set and was just like oh right I don't have to do that at all because <laughs> these actors are amazing let me more figure out how to pull a car when we can't turn it on because it's shaking too much but it has to look like it's moving <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> I love that. Mark, what did you learn about yourself being with all these incredibly talented people over the that, last three that years? That I'm, I'm a much more tolerant than I imagined. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I actually learned to, like, I, you know, I'm, I spent my life sort of working alone. I, you know, I didn't really see myself as you know, even when I did my own show, I, I liked collaborating, but I, you know, I'd never had the experience of just being part of an ensemble or doing that kind of work. And cer I certainly had not had the experience of working with that, this many women at the same time. And I just found that it, it was, it was sort of uh, uh, humbling in a way. And it was sort of, it, it gave me a depth of appreciation that I had not recognized in myself. I mean, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you when I, like the first episode that we shot when, when Ruth and um... Debbie, Sam. And I'm just crying. It, when you Ruth can and... cry, Mark. Mark, you can cry. Uh, believe me, I've been <laughs> doing plenty of crying. But um, just but even when they just, uh, even they fought for the first time, I just found it so powerful. And just watching all these women do this work was really, you know, it, it was like... Uh, it's like new to me. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know if that's weird or wrong, but I, I just had not been in an ensemble. I had not certainly watched wrestling or like there was something about the way they all work together. I felt like for the first, the entire first season, I didn't even sit with them because it was too much. <laughs> we <laughs> thought you hated us. <laughs> no, no, there was just too much going on. Like, you know, even like I, as much, I mean, I missed Allison talking just now she was talking and I had that moment when all you guys start talking where I'm like, I, I'm going to have to save my energy because if I sit in that circle, I will be exhausted in like five minutes. So, <laughs> all our director chairs will be over here and then Mark will be over there in the corner. By himself. I was nervous. Mark so out I'm of like, his way to take his chair from our group of chairs and then move, <laughs> extract it. And take I understand it. emotional boundaries are important. Yeah, again, emotional. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like, but so all of this stuff, like, it just gave me, you know, uh, working with other people, working with these, you know, amazing actors, and and also being moved all the time by the performances, and and also learning that, you know, through Sam, that you know, assholes are redeemable, and uh, and and it's a it's a beautiful thing uh, when somebody when you have a in life or a character the opportunity to watch an arc where 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 uh, you know, a loser, you know, kind of redeems himself. So is hummingbirds. So, um, so I learned all those things. Also breaking news, breaking news, negative. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Before I do it every, another, every two weeks, I get those sorry, tests. Mark, what do you want huh? to say? I say I get those tests every two weeks because it, it's an exciting day at the Dodger stadium. <laughs> Before I go on to another question, um, that one that I just asked, I feel like is so important to all of you and it is initiating such amazing responses. Um, is there anyone else that wants to talk about what this show meant to them or changed them through, uh, through the years be before I go on to a next question? Because I, I love hearing all these answers. I no? just say uh, for me, the show just, it allowed me to accept myself for who I am and how athletic I am. Because I remember in this business before, they would always say, oh, she has too many muscles or she's taller than your lead, the lead or whatever the case may be. And I remember when I actually found out that I got the part, I was like, oh my gosh, she's a stunt person. Like. I have to be in even more shape. And, and Liz and Carly was like, no, we accept you for who you are. Don't change anything. And, and to know that they said that to all the other girls, it was just, it was like, wow, I can actually be myself and, and be free. And that was just, it was just 
elated for me. I just it 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 brought me to tears that I had showrunners that accepted me for who I am, and that's the reason why I got the part. I'll say, um, I mean, when I got the part, I just moved back home to London in with my parents and sold my flat because my music manager had stolen all my money. And I was like, I'm giving up, I'm going home. I'm just kind of in this frozen, like the music industry had like, and I still do music, but it's a very like tough industry to be in. And I feel like it, I'd been in it since I was like 17 or 18 bullied by the media, gone through all this stuff and just like the nature of touring, which is hard. And you're kind of always in this, like, I'm the leader of this train that's on a railway that no one is like controlling and, um, and just like fighting for that to happen all the time. And then I got glow and um, came back to LA and it was just like, I remember the first day just going into that ring and just thinking what the hell is happening and learning together and being um, learning to be so vulnerable and everyone being so open straight away. Um, and I feel like Jackie, I can just remember you just being you from like day one in the ring and just being like, wait, are we doing this? Or like, what's happening? Is this going to happen? Like, I don't know how I feel about this. And I was like, wow, everyone's just so themselves here and there's no guard up. And, yeah. it, and and we just learned to do these really scary things. And I just, it was like the biggest cure I could have ever asked for in terms of my self-esteem was in the like alleyway. And I just got it back by being on glow and being respected by yeah. everyone. I felt so respected and supported. And then we just had the most fun I could ever have imagined. And then I had a threesome on TV and hey. <laughs> I ever thought that would happen. Yeah. Jackie, please oh, tell hi. everyone what you first told us when we got in the ring. Um, well, I'm not gonna be able to get any words out. But, um, <laughs> um whoo! <laughs> Guys, I've got two modes. I'm either way too big for the room or just crying and you can't hear me. So welcome <laughs> to my world. Um I just keep getting tissues and moving my lap desk around the house, <laughs> hoping the fucking show will come back. Has it worked? So oh my god. Um, <laughs> so um, I didn't realize until we started shooting Chloe how many things I sort of fancy myself like this powerful bitch who like is tough and like strong. And I didn't realize until we did Glow how many things I had repeatedly every single day of my life told myself I couldn't do. Like I didn't fancy myself a person that was like, had this internal voice that was like, you're not strong, you're not athletic your only value is that you're funny. You're not as pretty as everybody else. You're not as young as everybody else. You're too big, you're too much. And I just, I had this, I've been acting since I was nine and I got glow in my mid thirties. So I had a lot of time professionally acting, like missing elementary school to go on auditions. And like, I just had a lot of time to, and a, a lot of years of people just saying, it's not you, man. It's not you, man. Like we all did, every single one of us. And I, I, I didn't notice. I was walking around with my shoulders puffed out like I'm the funny bitch and I'm going to. And I just didn't notice how many things I told myself I couldn't do and Glow reversed it. I mean, I still have a lot of that stuff and the value issues and stuff, but Glow really reversed a lot of it and, and gave me a lot of my value back and it gave me um, these friendships and gave me this confidence and gave me this feeling that I am more than just a person who can make people laugh. And um, to Sid's point, I got in the ring on the first day and I was so insecure and I was so scared. And they asked me on the audition if I was an athlete and I was like, of course I am. <laughs> I'd never done a fucking somersault and by the way, still can't do a cartwheel. And I was like, wait till you see my athletic prowess. Everyone else is going to be nervous <laughs> because I'm friggin' Olympian. And then I'll cut this short, but I just said, I didn't even realize I said it, but I, everyone was like trying stuff. And I said, if anybody's uh, nervous about being here or being like the worst wrestler, you could feel free to just direct your attention to me. Cause I promise you I'll be worse than you. <laughs> and then a couple months, like a couple, we were, I first learned how to body slam. And I remember our 
um, our stunt, our multi Emmy winning stunt coordinators, Shauna Duggins and Travel Guerrera, they reminded me like, hey, remember that? Remember day one when you told everybody you were going to be worse than everyone and now you're body slamming bitches? And I was like, I mean, I like lost it. It was just like this punch in the face of someone being like, you are more than the stories you've told yourself. Thank you. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) I love you, Jackie. I love all you guys so much. Even though I didn't know that Kimmy was your best friend because you said you were my best friend. It's you, so, Kim, um, always been you. Fuck you, Kim. Guys, I think we should settle this in the ring. <laughs> oh, each other, who is Kimmy's best friend? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, though, um, too much. I think, uh, like, for me, and I could totally relate to Jackie because, you know, I, I I grew up with a stage mom that, you know, some days I would come home from school and I would see like new skates on the table. And I thought, I, you know, maybe I got an A in class, but it was like, no, guess what? You have an audition tomorrow and you got to learn how to skate by like tomorrow morning. <laughs> you ever have those things, Jackie? I'm sure you did. And um, for me, all those times that my mom pushed me, you know. And all those times I called her Joe Jackson behind her back. I didn't know that she <laughs> was really preparing me for something really fantastic. And the day that I got glow, uh, you know, my, I lost my mom to cancer. And I can tell her that her dream and our dream had come true. But coming on set and it being so fantastic and everything she would have loved and the fact that they cut my hair to look like hers from back in the day really was something special for me. And these are years that I will cherish for the rest of my life and that I can look back on. And um, they mean more to me in so many different ways that, you know, I can even express in, in the time that we have and to gain lifelong friendships and um, be a part of this group, this cacophony of uh, noise. Ah, Jackie, <laughs> your word. But I just feel truly blessed, and um, I feel blessed to be part of the Glow Cast. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. That that truly means so much. And I know your mom watched every episode from above. I, 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 she watched, she saw, and I love that. Um, Gail or Shakira or Ellen, do you want to say anything about um, what you learned over these last few years? You guys go, you guys go. Gail, <laughs> Gail, 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 bring it home. Make me, I me thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, Ellen and Shakira, do you guys want to chat or? Um, Gail, go for it. Gail, you did not do a slow lean forward <laughs> to unmute your microphone just to tell the other girls to go. <laughs> you better speak. <laughs> well, I think I'm still learning. I think that the the big thing for me is that I'm I, the the hardest thing about this past week is um, the flooding of ama- like all of the amazing memories and opportunities and experiences that I'm now learning from. It's the biggest gift that I've ever been given is the heart and soul and talent and energy that everyone put into so many years that I'm like looking back on and I'm like, how am I ever going to absorb all of this? I know I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm learning it at right now. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not very good at speaking. <laughs> and I think I'm, I'm learning <laughs> that uh, what everyone's been saying, I, I completely echo is like, it's not easy to, to hear or absorb or accept. Like you can just be you. And that's great, and that's enough, and we actually want that. And and I'm I'm still learning that from this very group, and it's totally changed my life, and, and it's the biggest gift that it will I think continue to change my life for the rest of it. So, you're that's great. how Sheila was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, totally. That's mm-hmm. that's what she was too, and I kind of went along with her, and she taught me more than I could ever 
you know, ever understand. So, yeah. Love you, Brianna. You want to add it? Um, I just wanted to say, like, I echo what everyone else is saying, and also Gail. Like, I think. I just haven't had the time to process it yet. I think it's um, been, I guess we've known for a week now and um, and I've been working every day this week. So I think I've just been compartmentalizing things and like not focusing on the fact that the show is over. And I feel a little overwhelmed actually being on the Zoom because it's like, oh shoot, um, okay, it's okay. over. And I don't think it's really hit me until now actually for the first time um and hearing from everyone so very um overwhelmed and also not really sure what my feelings are quite yet um but i do one thing that really stood out was that you know everybody was talking about just how amazing it was to all work together and you know i didn't realize how intimidated i was being around women until um, I was, you know, had to show up on day one and be in this ring with all of these crazy people <laughs> who I all love now. And it's like, I, I felt really scared and I didn't know how to interact. And I'd never had like a huge group of girlfriends before. And that was really strange. And I didn't know how to be. Um, and I think through this whole process, I really learned that it's really awesome to have a real badass group of girlfriends and that it's also really powerful and okay and a good thing and a strong thing to be vulnerable and to share your th feelings and your thoughts and all those things and that you don't have to keep it all to yourselves. And it's not just with our ensemble, but also with Liz and Carly, like I've never worked on a project where there's been so much encouragement to go to them with any issues or with any, you know, confusion or questions about any storylines and things. And, um, you know, I think just the show has also really taught me to use my voice and that it's okay to, and that it's not the end of the world to do that. In fact, it's, um, you should. And I felt that um, that's something that I've really taken from the show and has made me a stronger person and more myself. And it's because of this whole ensemble and the encouragement of everyone and the openness of everyone to sort of say, let's talk about this together before you go to listen, Carly, or like, or I would just go to Liz and Carly and, and say, this is what I'm thinking. And, and it started to feel like this is a very organic, natural and normal thing to do. Like you're, you're supposed to be able to tell people how you feel and you shouldn't keep everything to yourself. And this process is an artistic process and we're all, you know, trying to tell stories and we're actors and artists and storytellers and it's supposed to be collaborative and not just this one way thing that I think as actors, when you're auditioning, you get handed the sides and this is what you go in to do and you don't get to like really ask too many questions or work things out at the beginning. And so it's been a really wonderful process of like pushing myself to speak up um, and to find my voice through the, that whole process too. And to, you know, have a whole group of girlfriends and guy friends that I never thought like, just like, I've never had a huge group of friends like this before. And it's been like really, really cool to be able to have our three seasons working together. And it's been very empowering and, and awesome. And I can't believe it's over. I can't believe it. I am determined. I am determined to get you guys more because <laughs> This is a testament. The last 52 minutes is a testament to why this show is so meaningful and just also just so damn funny. I rewatched so many episodes over the last week and I was cracking up. And you guys, like, aside from what this the show means, you guys are all just downright hysterical at what you do. Like you bring so much damn joy to all of us. Where else would I be dressed up with a freaking, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I forget, what do you call this? But I'm like dabbing my eyes with it. I'm wearing like Reebok sneakers. Like why I wouldn't be dressed up if this show didn't resonate so much with so many of us. Um, Shakira, Mariana, Britt, um, anything else you wanna add on that front before we get to the last few questions? Cause I know some of you have a heart out in about eight minutes. What could you have to do? <laughs> hard out. I thought we were going to do this all day. I'm, I'm trying to do it all damn day, but you know. 
I'll just, I just uh, wanted to uh, say uh, how groundbreaking the show is and how historical and how it has this historical significance in terms of intersectional feminism, what it really did for us, how it really healed us as a group. And therefore it really heals the world over and over again as people keep watching it. And that's something that you don't get with every show. That's a magic that I think we can all be grateful for. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for that. Same with Mariana. I feel like when I heard I was cast on the show, I was actually really terrified of being on a show with so many women. Um, I think that's an industry and the city in particular is very isolating. You're in your car alone. You go to the same auditions against the same other women over and over again. You see deadline articles of the parts you didn't get. So I think I had my guard up and I was terrified walking into GLOW. Um, and it was just, it's, it, it's like transformed me. I think I'm a completely different person leaving this show. And I've learned like the true true empowerment that comes from women not judging, endlessly supporting one another. I mean, we've negotiated together. We did things that were, that are just not normal, I think, on, on other shows. Um, and to be seen and accepted for whoever you are, we're all so different. Um, I just like, I, I didn't realize like what female friendship is on that level. And I'm like, a, I'm such a better person because of this show so I'm, just, yeah, I'm grateful love you Britt love you that's that's so beautiful you know I mean for all the things we read about supporting other women and female empowerment you guys are the example of that like just look at you that's you're you're walking the walk and not just talking the talk Shakira how about you uh I can echo how terrified I was to hop into a season two of a show when you've already seen season one and thought it was so amazing and how the fuck you could fit in there. You know, and then I said, oh, they don't have a Latina. They need a Latina. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, I hopped in there and I think just there's something so beautiful about being in this environment where these women trusted each other so much. And I mean, it was a lot of their first two, you know, so watching them and just studying them. I always went last in the ring. You know, I, I went, I watched everybody else and saw how everyone else did it. And it just gave me so much courage to be able to portray Yolanda, you know, cause that's who she is. She's, she's this confident woman who is unapologetic. And I thought like, as the season grew, you got to see that more and more, but it's definitely a part of me that I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life. And I mean, the representation on the show is so important to me, like just seeing uh, Suni and, and Ellen on screen and, and Sid and Brittany Young, you know, like faces like those, you can't see it every day and get Emmy nominated. SAG, you know, it's, it's, such, it's such an amazing show, I think. And it just changed my life and it changed my career. And it's so hard not to cry talking about it because it's, it's just been life changing to see like what everyone has gone through and the, the friendships we've formed and the connections that we've made. I mean, this industry is not easy. So knowing that we have all of, all of us going through it at the same time and I can text any one of these people, you know, and know that they love me and that, you know, they would be there for me. It just is so amazing. And I speak for everyone, Shaq, when I say, uh, we were all equally as annoyed and infuriated at how quickly you picked up the wrestling. <laughs> hard to be happy for you. Like, at that point, I'm like, why are you, what do you mean? You done that, what do you? <laughs> you see, Jessica, you see? You can't, mm -hmm. you have to love them, right? You I feel like I don't remember not knowing you. I feel like you just, you came on day one and we were like, we're friends now. And like, yeah. I don't remember being like, like I don't overwhelming know. for you to be like, oh, because I'm like, okay, so you're in this group. This is my best friend. <laughs> We're just like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to, I want to uh, go to a very lighthearted, fun question because I feel like I've put you all through the ringer and I, <laughs> I feel terrible. And I'm again, I'm using a thingy here. I forget the word to wipe my tears. <laughs> um, but molecules of fame. This is the best question ever. Although she says not a question, or he says not a question. But I want Allison to know that I'm going to name my new puppy Zoya after my favorite character on the show. So that brings me to this question, which is for any of you, have fans told you that they're 
either naming their pets after you or their children after you. Have you ever gotten that? Because now there's going to be a new puppy named Zoya. So is there a Debbie Egan out there? Is yes, there I a- have gotten that. So a- a rescue. Well, I mean, you just read it. I, I, I didn't really realize. There's a dog rescue place in New York that names their dogs after glow cats. Uh, there's a cat. There's a cat rescue place in LA, Sans de Or Rescue. And if you want to get a cat, I would recommend rescuing. And they they named a whole litter after Glow. (laughs) And the mommy cat was Zoya. Liberty Bell. They did leave out Liberty (laughs) Bell. There were a lot of kittens. There were a lot of kittens. Everybody else got a kitten. Somehow Liberty Liberty Bell Bell didn't make it. And Zoya was the mom. But that's okay. I understand that. (laughs) But there was a Sheila. There was, there was a Sheila. A, a, a dog as well. There's been a lot of like Sheila. dogs, Sheila, you know. It makes me feel like a um there's like a um a, a, a city in Lebanon named after my cat named after my cat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. 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 You just an international <laughs> sensation. I think uh I think Happy a lot day. of um, a lot of women named their daddy issues Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't John the PA name his kid like Allison Betty or something? <laughs> Allie yeah. Elizabeth. Allie, Allie Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I don't think his wife he, he came up with those names before <laughs> meeting you guys. He right? says he came up with those names before, but he spent yeah. a few years with us. So yeah. <laughs> believe there's no connection <laughs> there's a little baby Allie Elizabeth running around <laughs> love that wait Allie before you have to go there's a couple things that I I want to ask you about and Mark too do you have to go I now? can stay no 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 I have a little more time okay oh. one thing I love the scenes with Sam and Ruth and I truly loved seeing you guys have those few moments of happiness in the bar together and I was like oh my god like I want the chemistry between you two you play off each other so well what were your initial thoughts when you found (laughs) out that that episode was coming where you know you and Mark are making out like what were your thoughts and would you want to have seen Sam and Ruth try to embark on a relationship in season (laughs) four well for me I was just like oh finally um, this tension. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, Mark. And we had to, you know, it was just so difficult for us to muster up the chemistry to like each other right from the get go. And just the fact that we we're able to pretend <laughs> that well, right? Allison, I mean, I'm shooting not those scenes that we had to do it again and again oh and again. God. And we were like, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I actually feel like it was preempted by, I was thinking a lot about the scene in season two. Um, maybe it's the penultimate where we're at um, Brit's character's school dance and oh, we yeah. dance oh, and we yeah. almost kiss to this, to Madonna's yeah. crazy for you. And it's one of my favorite scenes and I'm on a crutch. It's so romantic, but I remember in the moment we were toying with, you know, in the script, it sort of was like, Sam turns to kiss her, she breaks away immediately. And as we were doing it, the, the, we, they kept having us go a little, but, Allison, don't turn away so quickly. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, okay. And finally they came out and they were like, what if you just fully kiss? This was season two. And yeah. I was like, what? I'm gonna <laughs> need to speak to Liz and Carly. Uh, <laughs> It would have it would have tipped it too much. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It was not. It had. Not, but Mark was like, "What the fuck?" But my my reaction was, I was like, "I need to speak to someone because I was more just not prepared <laughs> yeah. for Ruth and Sam to go there yet." I was I like, could, "How could?" But Mark took it a little personally because <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone yeah. hey, this time kiss fully on the mouth. I'm I'm gonna need to speak to someone. Yeah, yeah. What am I? What am I? Yeah. So, the, but to be honest though, the like I the. I, I can't even explain what what it what it was, but Ruth and I, Allison and I, always had you know a, a fairly genuine uh, affection for each other in chemistry, which I think helped you know right from the get go. And um, and but I'm the think, one that got away. Sorry. True. Well, I mean, I was hoping for something, <laughs> but um, <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> but I. Uh, but like even in that scene in episode two when we were dancing like when i watched that on television 
I'm like, why can't I learn how to act better? I was so nuzzled into your hair <laughs> that like it, it was so genuine that I wasn't even acting and I felt vulnerable watching myself. I'm like, look at that idiot. He really wants to kiss that lady. This is why they had to write it in because we just were, we couldn't act not having the chemistry. Yeah. So think, eventually they just yeah. were like, I guess yeah. they're going to. And eventually I feel gonna... like I, I annoyed Allison with the, the attention and you know, that became a little much, right? Mark, sure. Sure. I'm here to tell you, you did not, <laughs> you, you could never. Oh, uh, that's a But challenge. I don't know to, to fully answer the question. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if Ruth and Sam would really work as a couple in the long run, but I feel like it would be. We could have gone a little further. I think I we could have gone. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if they make the movie, which I, I didn't mean to be negative. I think you're doing fun. full frontal. <laughs> uh, me? Yeah. Okay. With, with I signed that us. paper. I signed that paper. Yeah. If, yeah. If, yeah. If they make the movie, we're going to yeah, do like... full penetration a la Brown Bunny. <laughs> what are you doing What's to me? Oh, oh, Let's pivot to another pet question. <laughs> Ellie. No, okay. Guys, guys, That's this is so how awesome. we get the movie made. <laughs> oh, oh, right. I know yes. these things. Yes, full Ellie's penetration. Mark good. is signing on for full frontal. That's making the movie. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm doing Ellie's full penetration. <laughs> It's the porn. We're just pivoting into glow the porn. Okay, I'm good. On I'm Netflix. Good. I'm, so I, I, me, and, me and Mark. I'll practice. Right. Oh. <laughs> and Betty. We can't, we yeah, can't end like this. No. I don't, I don't Thank know you. Do. Good night. Yeah. Well, what's that about intersectional feminism? <laughs> <laughs> porn. Come on. Women have porn, sex. Betty. Wait, so here's something else that I've always wanted to know. Sorry, I'm going completely off script. I'm talking as a fan and I need to know this. So... So Debbie never found out that Ruth was pregnant with her ex-husband's child and had the abortion. So was that something you ever wanted to have explored um, before the series ended? Because I was always waiting for that. Are we ever going to get that moment? Because they could never, I think they could never come back from that. I love that they never found out I, 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 that Debbie didn't. I think that that's more of like a... I don't know that that puts him in their story more. And I don't know, you know, personally thinking about the way that our, um, our show ended and though we didn't intend it to be the last episode, you know, for me, since season one, I thought about, um, I fantasized about Debbie running towards Ruth in an airport and that's when they'd like fall together sobbing and when they'd make up and we got that scene, but not that wasn't their makeup scene. Um, and, you know, to me, I think um, every character on the show, though they're so different, they're really, what they have in common is like, they feel these Greek level feelings and they're given Ikea boxes to put them in. Like we all are, like you feel the, I want to do something magnificent with my life and the life you're presented is so, small and strange and sad and embarrassing. And I think in the wrestling ring, you can touch that feeling of like, oh, that's the superhero version of myself. And then I think all the characters try to seek out that um, outlet in their own lives. Like, how can I feel as strong as I am in the ring in my own life? You know, I think about, and it doesn't always look the way you think it's going to. I think about Arthi thought it was going to be med school, but it was finding her sexuality. Cherry thought it was going to be becoming a mom, but maybe she doesn't want to become a mom. And I think for Debbie, I think she thought it was going to be being a mom. And then I thought she thought, oh, it's going to be me making a career and, and being a CEO. And I'm going to tell Ruth, I've found this way for us to do this together. And I'm going to feel that Liberty Bell feeling, but in a boardroom. Um, and to me, the moment that she sees Ruth get on the plane, she's like, oh, the most magnificent thing I did with my life was loving her. Um, and I didn't know that until it was over. And that's how I feel about this show, M me, Betty, um, that I, you know, not until it's over, did I, am I looking back being like, oh, that, that was it. Like that, not, not that the rest of my life is a wash, but like, what an honor to have, to have touched those heights. Um, so I'm glad that the pregnancy thing is just sort of an afterthought and that the, the most powerful thing that Debbie ever did was, was loving Ruth. 
Damn. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I agree. And I, I also love also that our show touched into little things like while it is about these women together as a group, the show is also about these women in their private moments, you know, and there are things that they would touch on and then kind of be like, we don't have to revisit that. We, this is not going to be a major storyline. Sometimes things happen in our lives that are big in the moment or that's something personal that you go mm -hmm. through and then you don't tell everyone or have like dramatic aftermath about it. You know, I think some of my favorite moments on the show are, are, are those peaks behind the curtain. Uh, you know, in season three, there, an episode ends with uh, Debbie making herself throw up and it's like such quick insight into that character and who she is and how she's felt about her body in the past, being an actress and all this stuff. And I just loved that it didn't become like Betty's bulimia storyline for season three, like, yeah, because De we're not a, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't want Betty to get a cool bulimia storyline. Uh, <laughs> that's why I was glad. Um, no, I, I, I just like that that we were able to handle, um, you know, our show above all was really fun and funny. And I think it's cool that we were able to handle a lot of really heavy topics and say things about them and then continue to have fun and life goes on and these characters are full, you know, and not defined by those moments. Love that so much. Um, speaking of those personal relationships we saw play out on the show, Rhonda and Bash in season three for Kate and Chris, you guys just broke my heart so much because it was so complex and so complicated as you're both realizing these, these massive truths about one another. So I'm really curious, what were your rehearsal scenes like, if you even rehearse, but what did you guys talk about as you were prepared to shoot um, such deeply personal um, moments for both Rhonda and Bash. Well, are you talking about the deeply personal moments? Or are you talking about like gay threesomes and like <laughs> sex scenes? Like, because those are two kind of different. And Chris Battle Strudel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're singing. <laughs> Whatever you would like to speak to, Mr. Lowell. I think, uh, I feel like our threesome scene was really personal. It was. And we had an um, we had an that that was like the most incredible experience to shoot because we had no idea what it was going to be until we did it and this whole relationship between bash and ronda that was kind of building from the beginning like when she's helping him organize the party and they're sort of you know like this weird in this weird way they work really well together and they have a lot of fun together because they enjoy being silly and Rhonda's kind of got the street smarts that Bash doesn't and she's kind of helping him and it it became this it became more serious than they thought it was going to be I think um and it, it, like it was so intense shooting it wasn't it Chris yeah, it, it was, was like it. we were so nervous and we we'd rehearsed a lot and we figured out how the whole scene was going to run but honestly when Chris walked into that room I was just like Oh my God, like yeah. it was crazy. And he played it so differently to how I thought he was going to play it. And so it was so fun because the tension in the room was like, it was really high. Like it was a, it was a really intense scene, but it's because of all the stuff that was going on between them before that I think, and then, and then it wasn't this kind of insane raunchy thing. It was like this, this huge kind of emotional moment for Bash. And this vulnerable, I mean, you can speak to that, but like, it was this weird, like, Rhonda's wanting to be accepted by her husband. Like she's wanting to, um, for him to like her and she's trying to make this work. And she's also pretty open and down to kind of, and horny and feeling a little like ignored. So it kind of became, you know, it was like flirty and dangerous and what's going to happen. And then for Rhonda, it was like, okay, this is happening and this feels good. And it, and it just, it meant so much more than I think either of them really knew, but I felt all the work that we'd been doing in the season kind of come to a head and, and shooting that scene was just so incredible. Yeah. I think Liz and Carly did a great job sort of really slow burning that um, relationship between the two. 
it's also, I think, a great example of uh, an instance where, you know, um, you, you sort of you sort of assume that any scene where there is nudity, which for us we had to do, I think, in the second episode of the third season, um, is going to be the sexier scene. And ultimately, I think that scene, which has no nudity in it, but is so like um, full of sexual tension, that, that is so much more of an erotic scene to me than the other. Um, but really, for me, the, the thing I love about uh, the relationship between Bash and Rhonda is, is, is that by the time the season ends, you, you feel this very profound love that they have for one another, but it isn't um, necessarily sexual. It's, it's more than platonic. It, it really, it's, 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 a, it's a, essentially a failed marriage in, in a sense, but at the same time, you really feel how deeply these people care for each other. And, 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 and Part of that is, 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 you know, just the fact that, I mean, working with Kate alone, I, we didn't really have a lot of stuff in the first couple of seasons. And, and we, I just remember really just falling in love with you on the, uh, that third season. You just did such amazing work and it was just, you're such a superb acting partner to have. And I, I just, I remember on our last day when we were shooting our kind of like last scene together where, you know, Bash decides he wants children cause that's going to be a good <laughs> idea for him in this state. Um, just hugging Kate in that scene and just finding myself getting like wholly emotional over it just because I, I just really loved working with you and with, with all of you. I mean, it was such a, it was such an honor. Y'all are so fucking talented. It's crazy. And anyway, I'll get all choked up talking about it. Mark kind of mentioned that he would like to do that, that dance scene with Allie again, uh, cause he was all in her hair and stuff, but I'm curious for the rest of you, is there a scene <laughs> that you loved so much that you would love to do again just because it was the time of your life or a scene that you want to do again because you watched it and you were like, shit, I could have done that a different way. I want another take at it. Um, what, what scene either brought you so much joy, you would do it a million times again, or one you just want to do over? The you know, camping like, scene. Yeah, the camping the scene. scene. The entire scene. Watching Ellen and Jackie, like I feel like that was... I don't know, like it was one of the most incredible experiences. And I just was a person basically there saying stupid jokes in between them doing the most brilliant work. And like, that was such a, um, that was incredible to me to be a part of that and watching them. And that I didn't know if I'd be able to cry. Like, I just was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cry in the moment. And they like made me cry every time just by watching them. And so I want to relive that again, just to like watch Ellen and Jackie work. Is that crazy? But it was just the best. That was like the best experience, like very cathartic. So it, it really, yeah, it really was. There was a, there was a, a few takes where I didn't realize that the camera was even on me and I'm, I'm just reacting to Ellen's, you know, monologue. And it was true in the moment and, you know, um, when they said cut and they didn't move on, I was like, oh, we well, didn't get my coverage. And I'm like, yeah, we did. I was like, oh, but I didn't know. <laughs> and I wasn't acting. And they were like, no, but it was great. And I'm like, OK, it was real. So, OK, mm -hmm. and that's true acting when it's true in a moment. Got my certificate yeah. mm -hmm. in the mail. Same with me. That was. Oh, sorry. Go, Jackie. Oh, just quickly. Yeah, that was. Um... Thanks for saying that stuff back. I don't, I, uh, yeah, I'll, pro I'll process it later. <clears throat> but I think for me, that was, um, that I think was the, the turning point to what I was saying before of just like, I wanted my whole life to have an opportunity. I, I present as a clown and all I want my whole life is this opportunity to not present as a clown. I'm a grown ass woman. I can choose to not present that way. I can't, it's hard to unpack. Um, Anyway, that scene, that arc, that story really gave me the opportunity to challenge myself. I read it and I, I got to be honest, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't confident that I could do it. When I read it, I wasn't like, yeah, watch me go. I'm about to act. I was like, oh, I, have, I don't know that I can do this. And we sat there and like the, the support of the women around us and me and Elle, it just felt like... Um, yeah, I felt it was really special. Go ahead, Brittany. Sorry, babe. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think one thing that a lot of people, you know, what ends up in the show is not 
always necessarily the only things that were shot. Like a lot of things do get deleted or you don't see like the scenes in full. Like I definitely know there was a lot of moments where you can, like you say as an actor, like, I want to go again, let me go one more time. But then the director says like, we have to move on. Like I know in the third season when Sadell and I did the mud wrestling, we only shot that once. And we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like that wasn't good for us. We need to go one more time. And they were like, we can't do it to reset the mud to like do all the things. They're like, no, we want to do it one more time. And they were like, okay, okay, we'll do it one more time. And then we still felt like we needed to go again. So I think it's really interesting to see, like, sometimes I have to remember what always, you know, makes it on isn't not what I thought would make it on in my head, but it still is always fantastic. But I definitely know there was a couple of times where I was like, oh no, I need to go one more time just for me. And usually we got it, but sometimes we didn't. I would love to see some like extended episodes <laughs> of Globes. We know how much sometimes things get left uh, out to make our, our time mark. And um, there's some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff on that cutting room floor. Like in season one, where it's where Sam gets that phone call from Debbie. If the camera just panned down, it's me lying naked next to Mark. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I think I. I think I. Uh... In the in the in the pilot, we all did an introduction. Do you remember that? Like most yeah. of it was cut. The but... the audition at the yeah. beginning. No, remember when we were no, all the the everything? filming it. And I did the bit. No, it was the the when I or maybe the second episode. I did. I uh, Rebecca and I came over and and I started talking about how the trombone is like is close to the human. Sounds like the human voice. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> and like everybody just did this really hilarious intro. I think somebody sang something at some point. Um, I don't know that. I I wish I I could have seen that all all the, the way through. I remember in the the finale of the first season when the first time that I had to announce and we were in this, I don't even remember where we were. We were at some crazy ass venue. But what was really fun was being able to watch all of the girls come in and do the matches that they'd been working on this whole time. And I remember just one after the other coming in and just blowing my mind with what they had learned how to do i mean it was it was pretty unfathomable the 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 stunts that y'all pulled off on the show i I really couldn't believe it and i had the best view the whole time i I would do that again i would love to be in that chair and and watch what y'all did again it was it was superb about everyone's wrestling matches we were just all like oh my god like every time you know the duos would come out or the teams would come out and wrestle one another like because we would do full matches like it was a real thing you know and uh they were awesome yeah kate and britney's uh from oh my god (laughs) wait you guys you guys i've been watching marin try and say something for like eight minutes (laughs) and like that is must exactly be what it was like for him to be on this show he's literally gone like, that's literally all, all I wanted you, to say is uh, I I, uh, I wish I hadn't gotten so fucking skinny for season three because I've watched it and I'm like, does anyone think Sam has cancer? <laughs> like I just tried, like I think I was competing with Allison or something. I just, I wanted to, I, the plan was like just lose enough weight to where you won't feel shitty about eating craft services all the time. So give myself a little window of, of, of skinniness so I could eat shit on set. And then it just felt too good to keep losing weight. And then I yeah. watched some of that season. I'm like, oh my God, I look like I'm 90. But that's you me. Got that's too me. Into it. We got too into it. And you would sit with me being like, all of season guys, Do you guys remember the episode that I really loved? I wouldn't say I would change anything, but when we were actually given our wrestling personas and everybody was actually doing the introduction and, every, and literally it was like, as soon as you did yours, you were a rap, but people were staying and was like, wait, what is Brittany going to do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what's Jackie yeah. going to do? Like we all stayed because we were literally, we were given the opportunity to actually express how we thought our wrestling personas was going to be. And we got to improv a little bit. So everybody was like really different and bringing their own. And that's when we were like, I was mm-hmm. kind of blown away with what everybody actually did that I thought I had to do something different because I thought at first when I saw my character I was like she doesn't want to be junk chain like what but then everybody was doing all this exciting stuff that I was like oh yeah junk chain they were like (laughs) yeah 
They were like, no, you don't like it. I was like, that's what I thought, but I thought everybody else was <laughs> the, the gum pop, like, Sadell does this, like, she's chewing gum and she does this, like, gum smack. And it's like, it's hilarious. Yeah, we're all, but most often when we're um, shooting the cast of Glow, just know most of us are behind the camera supporting the performance mm-hmm. of one another. You would think, you know, oh, we're just going to, you know, so and so's in the ring doing their thing and we're all at our cast chairs. For the most part, we're all like behind the camera or over at Video Village supporting the performance of one another. And, uh, you know, that's, that's special. That's something to see. Not every, I don't think not everybody does that. It's Mm -hmm. uh, every time I come back each season and I would hear like our stand-ins who are absolutely awesome would talk about how when they would go to other shows, they couldn't wait to come back to glow because the camaraderie of the crew and the cast was just so special. And, you know, they look forward to coming to work every day. And, you know, that makes that makes that makes you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. It was so fun to watch, especially because we started all doing our wrestling training together. And then, you know, as we broke off and people learned individual matches, it really was the best to just we literally just be sitting in the bleachers like our characters, just watching everybody do their next thing and cheering them on. And and they would just blow us away. So like you're dancing, fun. like you and Shakira dancing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, Ali, yeah, we perfect did example. Sit in your whatever. Chair and people are like, oh, you, it's not your scene. You can just sit here until we call you back in or whatever. But we'd all be like, no, I really want to go and sit and watch this match or this dance. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can we please like, stay out here? We promise we'll be quiet. We promise we'll be quiet. Because they all want us to get us the fuck out of there. <laughs> we got told we off so badly quiet. in season one because we were not ever quiet. You remember when they had to sit us down to yes. tell us that we needed to behave <laughs> on set? We're like, but we love each other. <laughs> and on that note, and on that note, it's been great, everybody. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Jessica, thank you so much for hosting this. It really Uh means a lot. And I really hope that everybody will use their voice and vote. You know, if you loved anything about this show and the way the women took control of their own destiny, you can do that too by voting. Do it for the nation. Speaking speaking of being proactive, before you go, Allie, fans want to know what they can do to help get a movie made or closure. I mean, I- I'm fully on board with this. So what can fans do? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think people are tweeting and, and hashtagging save glow. There's I, a petition, I, I think. Uh, they, Mark, tell us more. No, I just, I think there's a petition out there and uh, I, I, it would be a very exciting thing. And it would seem like, you know, Netflix could, could do it if they, they just wanted to do it. It would be, it, yeah. I think it would, it, it would probably solve the problem. It would be fun to do. It would be easier for them to do it. But I, who the fuck knows what, what they're going to do. But I, I mean, I, I think it's a great idea and I hope people rally around it enough to, to, to raise the interest of the executives over there. And you all would do it, right? Yeah, I would do it. Fuck yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, if everyone votes, if everyone votes, if everyone votes, the election goes. Yeah, yeah. If there, there if has Trump to still be a society. Tra- yeah. Right, if Trump right. comes back, I'll be living in Ireland, so it'll be a harder <laughs> commute. <for me. laughs> right. If, uh, if you're mailing in your ballot, if you're mailing in your ballot, mail in a letter to Netflix too. If you're <laughs> going into the polls, sign uh sign the petition online or do both. You know, we were an old school show, so do old school snail mail and uh, the internet. I think we're on, I think we're actually on the ballot in California. Glow. (laughs) (laughs) Glow movie. (laughs) I know Allie had to go. I'm fine with staying on a few more minutes if you guys want to answer some more questions, but if you need to go, I completely understand it too. Did anyone want to say anything else? I have to to go. I I love you. Mark, of all people, you said, what do we have to do? And now you're the one that's leaving? Well, no, I have to go to the bathroom. So oh, then fine. I also have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you could, uh, Mark, you could take us with you. I've been on in the bathroom the whole time. That's why I have the background. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, I, can I say one more thing? The Just whole time? The whole time? Are you okay? The whole time. 
time. I oh need some fiber. I need some fiber. <laughs> I think the complexities of our group is what has been so meaningful to me that we're all so different and we all have very different opinions and we all deal with emotions very differently, but we share that and it's sometimes challenging, but like that's real, that's a deep, deep union. That's a deep bond that um, I feel very privileged and fortunate to have is that I have people around me that have taught me so much. I'll never forget these lessons. And it's, it's just the most precious, valuable thing to me ever that you all are so different and you have so much to bring to the table and you've taught me so much and changed my perspective forever. So that's like insane that I could get that from a job acting in a leotard. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to call it a job. I feel like I hear here totally, totally changed my life. Yeah. Thank you. Yay. I love, love you all. Love you all. You guys love and you. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you, Jessica. 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 Love you guys. So good to see you. Vote. 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 Me too. So I feel like this is the after. No, after. you hang up. No, you hang up. No, um, like hang the, up. the season one rap party where Kate, Mariana, and I were the last, were the last one. one. They were literally like sweeping us out. It was like five <laughs> in the morning. <laughs>